Hello everybody, I hope you're all doing well. It is the weekend yet again. So, let's see what we can get into, I suppose. I suppose the first thing we'll start with is this sitting right here on the workbench, since it's still sitting here from earlier this week. I picked this up during the week at a thrift store for $20. I thought that was a little steep, but these kind of things always get my curiosity going. So I was really curious to see if it would work, uh, what problems it would have, and uh, what might still be on that hard drive. So, uh, $20 later, here it is at home, and it would not boot up. Wouldn't do anything at all, except power on and the fans would go. So I did some research online, and boy, there is a lot of random information out there about this particular model. I believe this is a DC5700. It has a Core 2 Duo 1.86 gigahertz in it, or something like that. Um, <clears throat> so, obviously I wasn't able to get it to do anything. That's just started taking stuff apart. Now this panel here says 2008 on it. And inside, we have the processor naturally, the hard drive. There's a CD drive that goes right here. Here it is. Here's all the RAM. I believe the maximum when I was looking it up, this thing can hold is four gigs, and that's exactly what they had inside of it. Um, it does not support a graphics card here. You'd have to use a PCI graphics card, so I'm sure it's using whatever graphics the Core 2 Duo has. Uh, but anyway, how did I get it working so I could figure out what kind of processor it has and whatnot? Well, um, after taking everything apart and you know making it really simple, it still wouldn't beep or do anything. I cleared the CMOS back here, we got a switch and the battery and all that good stuff. Still wouldn't beep or do anything. So I was like, fine, I've never seen a reseeding of a CPU make a difference, at least in my personal experience, but let's give it a try. So I took the heatsink off, took the processor out, sure enough it's a processor, put it right back in there and closed it up and sure enough it turned on, it started beeping. And the reason it was beeping is I didn't have RAM in it at the time. I didn't have anything plugged in except the fans and the power supply. Gotta go simple to figure it out, you know? Uh, so anyway, I put the heat sink back on, which you really shouldn't do. You should really put some new compound on there. But I was just curious to see what the BIOS had to say. And that's how I figured out what processor it has and everything. So what I need to do with this project is put some new compound on the CPU, clean out this uh, cooler here, uh, clean out all the dust, and then we'll see what's on this hard drive. I'm assuming the hard drive still has stuff on it, and uh, it just didn't boot up, so they just assumed, well, it's bad, let's just get rid of it or donate it or whatever. Now underneath uh, this sticker here, or the sticky note rather, there's a Windows XP Pro, uh, key and then a Windows 7 Home Premium key. So this is a refurbished a Microsoft PC according to the sticker on there. I'm sure somebody did it other than Microsoft but it's a certified you know one. So obviously it lived its life in a business somewhere then it got refurbished and then it got sold um, as a refurbished PC for someone to use and then whatever happened to the CPU and uh, here it is. Other than the dust in the uh, you know, cooler here, it's in really good shape. It's not dirty or anything really. Front looks pretty nice. So not bad. Uh, we'll see what we can do with it. But that's that project. Let's set that aside for the moment. I also picked up this Lampy while I was there. I, I absolutely love Lampy fixtures. And I had to pick this one up because you see there, the ballast, it's white. It's one of those wonderful, um, high quality, I forget the name of it. I think it's a VS or something. It, it stands for something. I forget the name of what the actual ballast is called, but one of those very high quality um, European ones. So anyway, it still has the original Lampy bulb in it. The funny part here is that when it's on, you can see a Goodwill sticker underneath it, and you can kind of see it there. So somebody bought it from Goodwill um, on the third month of this year, and then they donated it yet again to Value Village. <laughs> and uh, of course at a cheaper price than what they found it at Goodwill for. And uh, it works absolutely fine, just needs a little cleanup and uh, 
I'll find a use for it. I love these fixtures. They are so high quality and wonderful. And it still has a ground pin, unlike the other one that I found that someone broke it off. So yeah, that's a fun project. Uh, I'd like to figure out what I can do with this. I'm not sure if it'll run Windows 10 or if we'll just have to stick with Windows 7. Um, I do Windows XP, but if I want Windows XP, I have this wonderful thing here. And uh, I mean, it works perfectly fine with Windows XP. In fact, that's what it should have on it, really. Uh, anyway, yeah. So here's a HP small form factor and a Dell small form factor. Now this one's from like 2004, 2005. This one, well, according to the case, it's 2008. The processor's from 2006 design, so been around a couple years, but they're still using it. It's a little more modern. Anyway, that is that stuff here. Let's see what else we have. In the back of the car we go. So, we got some bulbs here. I've been needing bulbs, believe it or not. I've uh, been running out of bulbs to do little videos on, believe it or not. Well, most of them are back home, so that makes it a little difficult. Anyway, uh, these are from the ReStore in Bellevue. They seem to always have some interesting older stuff. So here we have a Sylvania Spot Grow, 150 watt. Look at that packaging. That's so cool. It says track light. Look at all the different track lights. Very popular back in the day. That is awesome. And yes, they did make R40 track lights back in the day. That is so cool. Here we have something interesting. This is a 100 watt R20 flood bulb. Usually you see these in a max of 50 watts or 45 nowadays. This one's 100. I have seen these as, I think, like pool bulbs or like hot tub bulbs or something. But no, this one doesn't say any of that on it. It's just 100 watt. Different. A very nice spun glow bulb. It's not in the best of shape looking wise. I can't read the wattage on it, but... Uh, Picked it up because, you know, I think they were all 50 cents. All the bulbs are 50 cents. This thing I've seen before at ReStores. I've, I don't remember ever seeing these in stores. But uh, this thing is incredibly heavy. Very thick glass. And uh, it's halogen, as you can see in there. But boy, this thing is heavy. It's a GE... Energy saving, 52 watt halogen flood. Kind of like a R30 or something. Very bizarre. And can't have enough of these. This one is a Sylvania. Oops, upside down. Sylvania three way, one, two, 300 watt, soft white. I think I'll put this one in the lamp uh, in the basement instead of the red etch GE that I found. Uh, we'll save the red etch GE and put this one in there. Plus, this one is 125 volts, so it'll last a little longer than the 120 volt. And this box is interesting. Looks like it was a four bulb value pack of some Philips flood bulbs. But I decided to use it to hold the bulbs so I could walk outside with all of them. What else is still sitting here? We have some fluorescent fixtures. Now, these I've known about being at the ReStore in Bellevue for quite some time. And I just never picked them up because I didn't really agree with the pricing on them. I don't know if these all have a price on them. Yeah, they do. So they had it for $9. And I just felt that was too much for what it is, compared, at least considering the fact that half of the stuff that I get, I don't really actually use. But these are going to be put to use now because I have a place and an idea for them. Anyway, the blue tags are 50% off, so I got these all for half price, which is even better. So, where did I see on one of these? It was originally $17.99. Uh, 30-watt rapid start. Now, one of these does have, looks like they had it for $12 for a moment. Uh, let me get the other ones. And there we are. Four, three foot, 30 watt, rapid start, strip lights, brand new in box. Now, these obviously came from somewhere. 
They originally sold at McClendon's in Renton. And this one still has the original sticker on the end, $20, American Fluorescent. Now the interesting thing with the American Fluorescent here is none of the other boxes on either end here. They have the code, but they don't say American Fluorescent. But I believe it, it probably is American Fluorescent. At least the design definitely looks like it, excuse me. So that's pretty cool. So where am I going to put these things? I've been wanting an installation over here that is much more interesting than the LED tubes. And we've taken some of the tubes out, as you can see, as my friend that uses this area the most uh, preferred it being a little dimmer. So I took the bulbs out and uh, that's what we have here now. Well, um, these are obviously aren't the most interesting thing in the world. In fact, the most interesting thing here is probably this and the ceiling fans, naturally, at least in my mind. So, um, we're going to have to do a couple different things over here. We're going to have to replace these because they're not as interesting, and they never were, never, never would have been, but they were a good start for this area, and they worked well. Nothing wrong with them. They still work. The bulbs are still good. Whatever. We'll get some parts off of them, but that's really about it. So, I've wanted, well, wanted, to, as I said, change it, but... I've been trying to think of what I wanted to put over here. Well, um, speaking with my friend and how he uses this area the most, it would be more helpful if the lights were on the circuit here with the, the main switch and the fans were on the separate switch so he can uh, turn them on and off separately. Sure, that sounds great. We can do that. So, we'll need to either put in an adapter here that'll plug in cords to the side, or just replace the socket with an outlet. And I still haven't decided what I want to do with that. I'm thinking just replacing it with an outlet is the best, but we'll see. Or I'll wire it up some other way. Because I do have on the other side here, this socket is also connected to the main, the main circuit here. So maybe I can move that wire around, maybe I can branch from it, um, or we'll just plug it directly in here. Haven't decided on that one yet. Anyway, what kind of fixtures did I want to put here? Well, after thinking about it for quite some time, I wanted some single bulb F40 T12 fluorescent lights. They're dim, they're not super bright, and they're unique in the way that you can appreciate the individual bulbs. So something like this guy right here, just a single F40 T12 fluorescent tube. Now one all by itself is definitely dimmer than the LEDs here, and sure, all of this is much more uh, non-energy efficient, I guess you could say. But I'm going for looks in a certain feel here. So whatever to all of that. Um, so I've been on the hunt for a little while looking for single lamp F40 T12 fluorescent fixtures that are older, not the T8 F32 T8 ones. Those the sockets aren't big enough on to put T12 bulbs in anyway. Um, so I was in Bellevue the other day and stopped by the ReStore and well, those fixtures were there. I actually forgot about them, but I found them behind a whole bunch of stuff, and I was like, oh yeah, I remember they had these things, and of course they were on sale at the time with that color tag, so I'm like, this is perfect. This will work great. Of course, they're not the F40 T12, they're F30 T12, but that's unique. I have nothing against that. Um, and four of them. So what am I going to do with four of them? I was originally just going to put one, two. Well, I thought about it. Let's just put two of them, one, two, and one, two. Now, they're in a line. That's unique to me anyway. Uh, the only other issue is this fan. Now, the fan's probably gonna have to move like over this way or something, uh, mostly because I don't want the light to be underneath the fan blades and cause a you know shutter effect that is annoying. 
So that's the idea of everything over here. Well, I got those fixtures. I don't have any bulbs for them at the moment. I have some T8 bulbs, but what I'd really want is some nice T12s to give this wonderful older gym vibe. Because uh, that's what you'd like to eventually go for here, I'm pretty sure. So kind of a little older feel uh, with touches of whatever. So that's the plan for this area and I'm excited about it because I've been wanting another project, something like this to do for a while. Anyway, so we have those fixtures. I also debated on moving this one over there because well, you could put a thing in it, but I, I also like it over here. So we're just gonna leave it here. And that's where these wonderful fixtures come in. So we have these wonderful fixtures. What in the world kind of bulbs am I gonna put in them? Well, don't you worry. I stopped by the Tequila Restore. As I remembered, they had a whole bunch of fluorescent tubes of various different styles. So I picked up all the F30 T12 fluorescent bulbs they had, and they're still in their box here. So we got 15 bulbs in here, including an extra little uh, 15 watt one down here that they threw in. It's a warm white Sylvania. I thought, well, uh, that would be a good little bulb. It's got, it's got tape on it, but uh, be a good bulb to put in this fixture. I'm always a T12 looking, you know, fan. So nothing wrong with that little extra there. But these, we got 15 of them here. This one's a little messed up, but you know what? We can make it work. They are Philips F30 T12 Daylight Rapid Start, 30 watt. Well, wouldn't you know, that's exactly what these fixtures require. Rapid Start, 30 watt. Um, I really didn't care what color temperature, cool white or daylight would be nice. Um, so daylight it is. They also had some F30 T8 bulbs, but they were like the 25 watt ones. And those are obviously not compatible with these fixtures. Those are for like electronic ballasts. And um, obviously that's probably why those are there because you can't really use them on much really. At least these old style ones. So very fun. We got a box to put things in. <clears throat> I'm always loving a fluorescent tube box and some of the curtain pieces here to store your bulbs. That's always helpful. And we got some wonderful fixtures. So we have a couple different projects to do. Um, I think the first one I'll do though is uh, move this computer and uh, get some videos done before it gets too hot out here. I was gonna do videos, but then I thought, well, wherever the adventures go today, I might find something else to make a video on. And uh, while it's cool outside, I should really get some weed whipping done because boy, there's not really any grass to cut because it's just so dry, but there's plenty of dandelions and random weeds and stuff, so we'll go take care of those. I apologize for all the fan noise in the background of these videos, but it's the only way to stay cool out here. Anyway, got everything out of the computer here and uh, vacuumed and cleaned it off the best I could. This is looking nice and clean. Much better. Got all the drives out, unplugged everything, vacuumed everything except around the uh, CPU there. I didn't want to touch that. Uh, got it all cleaned up. Okay, got the front grill done too, and the fan here looks much better. Look at how clean that is. So is a little uh, shroud. So, now we just got to put it back together. I think what I want to do first though Let's take care of uh, putting some new thermal compound on the CPU here. Got the CPU and cooler all cleaned up of its old thermal compound. Put some new thermal compound on and we got the heat sink installed again. So let's go ahead and put it back together.
And there we go. We should have it all back together. So let's see what we can get on the monitor. Still haven't cleaned this screen since I got it from Goodwill. Uh, obviously need to do that, but we got all the Optiplex uh, stuff here and it's all connected to our HP. So I haven't plugged this in yet because sometimes it likes to turn on as soon as I plug it in. So let's go. Nothing. Do have a light though. So, oops, got the button on the front. There we go. Apparently I hit it too fast. Well, looks like it's gonna be counting memory for a little bit since it has to go up to four gigs. Uh, so we'll give it a minute. I think I read online that four gigs is the max for this computer, but once it got to 3,500 megabytes, we've been going incredibly slow at counting anything. Well, we finally got done counting the memory. Chassis fan not detected. Well, I'm not surprised there's nothing plugged into it and there never really was, I don't believe so. At least the plug next to it there is the CPU fan. So uh, CPU fan. There is a fan here in the power supply that does have a cable that plugs in right there as you can see but that's where it was when i found it i don't think it reaches all the way over there i suppose if it really wants a fan i could add one here since uh all the card blanks are gone except this one and the holder that holds them either way here's all the information and i did find all four gigs of memory the 160 gig hard drive and the toshiba dvd rom drive so i guess we'll hit f1 to save changes I think I asked it to take me into the BIOS. Um, yeah, it's not detected. That's nice. Date and time isn't set. Well, let's do that now, I suppose. There's the information on this computer. Nothing too amazing, but uh, I'm more than happy to, uh, you know, see whatever it can do. So we'll go to set the date and time. Okay, let's see if the hard drive has anything on it. Boy, it really wants to tell me that that fan isn't detected. Maybe we'll try just plugging something in over there. But um, they're both running. I can feel them. I can feel this one pulling air in and pushing it out here, so. I don't know. We'll, we'll fix that later. Let's boot it up. Starting Windows. Yeah, Windows 7, all right. I'm surprised. There's really nothing on here. There's no documents. There's no music. There's no pictures other than the background pictures they downloaded. Um, there's whatever this log file is. They've never even opened up the media player. Um, there's a website saved in Chrome. I don't know if they ever used Safari. It probably came because they downloaded iTunes. But yeah, it's a very clean install. There's no programs in here, really, that are of interest. I'm not sure what they did with this thing. Or maybe they only had it for a short amount of time before it went kaput on them. Very, very weird. Well, anyway, what I'm going to do with it is get an SSD, because they're so cheap nowadays, and put that inside the machine, and, well, we'll see if we can do Windows 10 on it. I'm not sure if we can, but we'll give it a try anyway, and if not, we'll just put Windows 7 on it, I suppose, but it's at least worth a, a try. Yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm very surprised there's nothing on it. Usually when I find these things at the thrift store, um, there's all kinds of personal files on it. I mean, that Dell was completely wiped. Somebody was smart there. And uh, here, there, there's just nothing. I'm, I'm surprised. The only thing is that, you know, they have this language pack thing on down here. And that's really about it. So, we'll shut it down. I'll put it away for the moment until we get an SSD and then we'll play with it again. I suppose we should start with taking down the old equipment. We'll take one last look at it. So there it is with the uh, Sylvania LED tubes.
thing. <laughs> now the white cords I might reuse since they match the white ceiling. But other than that, um, we got our sockets here. These are obviously wired for direct 120. That video I did a long time ago now. Um, so that's why they're wired like this. But we'll just keep some stuff for parts and the rest of it's going to go to work in the recycle bin. Got two of them up. One, two. I didn't film doing it because I wasn't entirely sure how I wanted to do it. Oh, that's the wrong button. There we go. A wide angle version that is very unsteady. But that is the two fixtures. And we'll put the other two right over here where the others were. Now the issue is obviously this fan here. So what are we going to do about that? Well, I think we're just going to move it over a little bit once we get the the lights up we'll see because i think it's going to be right underneath it or right above it rather so there's two of them i think we're going to wire them together uh, through the ends here and then a cord will come out to plug into the socket here Well, one of these is not like all of its friends. This one is a side bulb mount, just like the F40T12 fixture that's over there. Obviously, that's not what I'm looking for. I want it to be a standard top mount bulb. So I made some markings here using the bracket to figure out the dimensions. And I got some tin snips. And we'll see if we can cut this here to get it into a more standard uh, style of bracket. The cover is the same length as all the others, so there's no difference there. It's just making a bracket for the sockets. Now, one thing I do notice that is different, though, is the wire. At least the thickness of the coating on the wire is thicker for this particular one. And the one that had the sticker on the end right here is an SM, where all the others were ST. There we go. Not too bad. We got all four mounted on the ceiling. See if we can make this bigger. There we go. So now the next step is to wire them up. And I think we'll have the power uh, come out of the ends of these and uh, head toward the middle here. And then these will just connect to their friend uh, to get power. So still haven't decided what I want to do with this. I guess we'll find out in the end. But now on to wiring everything. Here we go. We got these two up over here and these two over here. So obviously the cords are coming out of the middle. You gotta be plugged into the center here, but there's one problem and it might be resolved when we plug it into here, but obviously with these being rapid start, they have to be grounded. Well, they are. They're all grounded at every point of contact. They're grounded at the outlets, both that one and this one, and I have guaranteed and looked that these are all grounded as well. But for some reason, just this one will turn on all fine all by itself. This one you have to touch, and these you have to touch sometimes as well. Um, I have some different ideas for that. I have some preheat ballasts back home that could be put in. Um, I have seen some different ways you can use the rapid start ballasts in these and use them as preheat instead of rapid start. Um, so that would, you know, get around to the grounding problem. But we will see. Maybe there's something wrong with the grounding of, you know, these outlets here. That this, you know, the electric in this box is grounded better. I don't know, but everything is grounded. The ground wires are attached to the shells of the fixtures. Everything is as it should be. So now, let's get this down and see what's underneath. Here's a solution to our problem. Uh, that being needing to plug these things in. So obviously we have one of those brown plastic electrical boxes that were so popular at the time that everything in this house has it for some reason. I absolutely hate those plastic electrical boxes. Um, it'd be quite hard to replace it without ruining the uh, drywall here to get up in there. 
And uh, the wires that had pigtails from the regular wires down to the light socket. So I started to look around, think of some ideas. Well, these old plastic boxes um, are a weird size. So interestingly enough, this adapter box here fit it. So I put that on, I had this plate for an outlet, put that on and here we are. It's not anything too pretty, but I think it'll get the job done. So let's plug the lights in and see what we get. Looks a little ridiculous, but putting these wires uh, between the fixtures and the ends closest to the ballast fixes the problem. Of course, this one doesn't need it. The ballast cover is close enough. But believe it or not, it actually kind of works. The daylight fluorescent gives it a pretty cool feel. So I had those wires uh, in between the bulbs, but that wasn't as reliable as I was hoping it would be. So what did I do? Well, learning from this fixture here, since everything's the same except for the fact that it was supposed to be a side bulb fixture, um, the cover for the ballast compartment is closer to the bulb, thus helping with the rapid start. These um, were up higher because of the design of the end plates, uh, this one being different. So the bulbs are further away from the ballast channel cover. But as you can see now, it's actually <laughs> brought out quite a bit. I took them off of the clips. You can see the clip there in the middle of the frame and brought them down as low as I could go without them falling off. So my hope is that this will bring it closer to the bulb and aid in starting. Now I tested it with this one, um, it worked. So let's find out. First time with it, here we go. Boy, that one had a hard time turning on, but you know what? It at least turned on. So I'm gonna leave it like this and hopefully that makes a difference. Um, We'll have to see the more we use them. But one thing I do have to say, uh, like I think I said in the last clip last night, is the vibe and the color of these lights I absolutely love. This turned out amazing. Uh, the wires on the ceiling are nicely handled. The fans are on their own circuit now, and these lights can be turned on right from the door. I am so happy with the look and feel of this install. Went out to eat with some friends, and me and my one friend stopped at some places on the way to go and eat today, and boy, did I find some things that I never ever thought that I'd ever find. So, uh, where do we start? Well, I think we'll start with these, because they were the first thing I found. I got three of them here, and the reason I picked these wall sconces up is just because of their design. There's something about that that I absolutely love, and they have a socket on the bottom, and the top, and these, this one has a little red bulb in it, but you can show off a bulb on the top and then have one on the bottom here. But I thought they were so cool. Let's see here, this is a manufacturer. Very nice. So I'll get some polish for them or something, but they were just too cool to pass up. They'll make some unique lights for out in the garage here or something. Okay, so that was the first place. Well, actually, I got some other stuff there, too. I got this uh, Y splitter here for a socket. Now, this one's unique because it comes out the side, and you still have one that comes out straight. Uh, usually, they're in a Y like this, but this one's sideways, and it had this little plug in it, too. Uh, they threw that in. And then here's an, uh, one of these Snap It night lights that are sideways. It has a GE 7-watt bulb in it. Unfortunately, it's burned out. Um, well, this one's a Leviton. I thought it said snap it on it. Anyway, I have a bunch of these, but this one actually has its cover, so that's pretty cool. I have an ivory one of, of these, so it's neat to have the uh, brown version as well. Anyway, that whole box of, of stuff 
Um, they gave to me for $25, so I thought that's pretty good. Some real neat fixtures here. I just, I just love the vibe and look of that. That's so cool. Okay, well, we're over here now. Um, yeah, these three things are right in front of me, so I guess we'll take a look at them. These are, this one has the best etch on it. Duro Test Floromerc, Floromerc, 750 watt, 120 volt, self-ballasted mercury vapor bulb. Look at the beautiful construction of this thing. Oh my goodness. So we got three of them here. Um, they were $5, but the purple tags were 75% off today. So, you know, a dollar something. And then we have a whole bunch of these Norelco 175 watt mercury vapor bulbs, brand new in box. Again, a purple tag, so it was 75% off. And there's the beautiful bulb inside. It looks like it's a um, lifeguard, naturally, being Phillips. Westinghouse, you can see the nice big electrode in there. Beautiful. It's a wonderful find. And last but not least are these here. Looks like a standard 500 watt incandescent, but you take it out. And it most certainly isn't standard. It has this white coating on it. Now, I'm not sure if it's a white coating that still lets light through or if it's more of a flood but uh i thought that was pretty cool so i picked those up too there's two of them here so not expecting to find anything today uh, let alone go anywhere um so i guess asking us to go out to eat produced a lot of stuff um yeah wonderful videos to come on these for sure as always i do hope you enjoyed this video and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.